strategies for pacing yourself in your marathon, how to do it. Today, we're talking about that right here. I'm Rob Tatro. This is my brother, Charlie. We're Boston qualifying Boston marathoners, and we've uh, we've been running a lot of marathons lately, and we've done a lot of pacing expertise. Charlie, I can't think of a better person to give this topic about pacing during a marathon. You're the absolute best guy that I can think. I've ran next to you for at least four marathons now, and although you always give me a hard time telling you to slow down, your pacing is spot on in every race we've done. So let's talk about some tips during a marathon. So do you like to do, how do you like to start your marathon? Tell me about that. Oh, always slow. So always start slow. The energy you're going to save, you're going to win it at the end. Uh, it's, it's very, very easy for anyone who hasn't had experience in a marathon to run too fast at the beginning. And it's, it's very easy to just run too fast because you're so excited. It's your big day. It's your marathon day. So what you really, really have to focus at least for the first two, three miles is tell yourself, let's say you know what your goal pace is, tell yourself, I'm going to go slower than that goal pace, no matter what, so that you force yourselves to go slower because the biggest mistake you can go is go too fast at the beginning. It's crazy if we push that a little further yet, Charlie, you know, the first half mile, the first quarter mile, the first hundred meters, people just lose their minds at these starting races for marathons. Like I'll never get over every single time I do a race. It's like, you know, it's like someone called that there's, there's free salami uh, samples at the checkout counter and people are running like it's, the end of the world like slow down and just go slower than what everyone else is doing no like just yeah. slow down mm -hmm. Slow down. Your first mile, you're going to look at your watch. You're going to be like, what the heck? What did I just do? If you've not run a bunch of these, no matter what, you're going to be like, I can't believe I just ran that fast. And yet you're going to feel like, well, I'm not going that fast. So especially that first half mile, quarter mile, that first mile. You really, really have slow. to You really hard. have to try, try hard to go slow. You have to it, try hard. really hard to go really slow. Yeah, that first but mile. you'll thank us for it long term because your view is kind of like you do the first four or five miles a tad slower. You're doing your yeah. first kind of maybe 10 or 20. 20 seconds slower than kind of your, your goal pace. And there's a reason for that, right, Charlie? Yeah, a reason. So yeah, so negative splits have been proven to be best way to PR in marathons. Uh, I don't know if it's psychological or physiological, but I think it's mostly psychological uh, with some some portions of physiology playing into it. But if you are in shape for a four hour marathon and you run the first marathon in two hours and one minutes. The first half. The, second, the first yeah, half. Yeah, first half in two hours and one minutes. Then doing the second half in one 59 is going to be a lot easier than had you done the first half in two to try to do the second half in two. That one minute of energy you're saving for the second half will pay back in dividends. And I think to me, it's psychological. At the end, if you have energy, you're able to push beyond that whatever 95% aerobic threshold that you can hit. It's really an amazing feeling at the end if, if you've held back enough at the beginning san bernardino race when we qualified for boston and we were pacing and you were like we, we had a stretch okay we knew we needed to run a 305 but we were really hoping to run a three and if things go well hopefully like i don't know maybe better than three but you know you start you you had me on the right pace you started slow you're like rob we're gonna start slow we're, the the last half is quicker we're trust me we're gonna go slow we felt so fresh we had a pacing strategy we stuck to it we'd looked at the course the night before we we knew roughly what pace we wanted for the half. Remember how good we felt at the half? It was just like, I, we can pick up the pace here a little bit because we know there's only 13 miles left and that's what we did. And we ended up doing a significant negative split. I don't know how it would have gone had we went, gone out blazing saddles yeah. and, and tried to do a 120 in the first half. And then, okay, well, we only need to do 135 in the second half, but we may not, we might've just collapsed, right? We might not have been able yeah. to, to hold up that pace. And now, do you think, go ahead. Yeah, when you, when you get close to tasting that finish line, so maybe maybe eight or nine, eight or nine miles out. It gets hard, but you're tasting that finish line and you, because you've saved that energy, you're able to kind of push through it. So it, yeah. it's mostly mental because the only real downside from going too slow, really, the only downside yeah. is that you're conceding some seconds towards your pace. So if you're, if you're aiming to do nine minute miles and you do them at 920, as per your advice for the yeah. first five minutes, right? Or six minutes, let's say you've six miles, you've only really lost 20 seconds times six, 120 seconds. 
seconds. You've only lost two minutes by going really, really slow. 920 versus nine is a big difference. You should feel fresh, a lot more refreshed, stronger mentally. So the only downside is that you're giving up that time. But we've seen time in, time out that you're able to make it up. And it's way more fun. It's way more fun mm-hmm. and it's way more enjoyable. And, and it's mentally it, it's better for, for you and for me and for everyone when, you, when you're able to slowly chip away at that pace. And what we like to do when we run together, it's like we check in. Like, And I don't know, you might not have the benefit of running with someone, but you know, I was lucky enough to run with you. And I'm like, you feeling good still? Feeling good still? Yeah, feeling good. So let's go a little five seconds faster. Let's go 10 seconds faster. And then yeah. you, you can just progress through your marathon. Yeah, that's and if you don't have a running buddy. Running with, someone, run, run with a running buddy really helps actually. Yeah, someone but if you don't have one, yeah. if you don't have a running buddy, pretend you have a running buddy, right? Yeah, yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling like do the self check-in with yourself. How am I feeling right now? And, and go deep inside your mind and your heart and your legs. And am I feeling okay right now? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. And it's kind of like talking to someone else. You do the self check in, and then you could either pick up the pace or slow down. Yeah. Anything else you want to add, Charlie? Yeah. So critical to what you just said is the self check in. So pacing for a marathon should really be based on perceived effort, right? So that's why you're self checking in. So we're saying 20 seconds, a little bit slower at the beginning. That means maybe an effort of five. As the miles come in, you move to a six. And then at mile 17, maybe it'll start, it'll be a seven. And then at mile 20, it might be an eight. And then you kind of just go hard from there, right? But that perceived level of effort has to, should be easy at the beginning and it should start feeling hard. And you should embrace how hard it feels at the end because that's yeah. how you're going to run. That's how you're going to run a PR. Yeah. You should give it a hug. You should give it a hug, the pain, a hug and say, I'm so glad you're here because that means I'm going to enjoy this a lot more. Yeah. I think that's fantastic advice. Charlie, anything else you want to add? No, that's it. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to check out our podcast. Charlie and I talked about our running journey from the start when we were overweight, two dudes just trying to run one mile to qualifying for Boston Marathon, Ironmans, triathlons, uh, world championships, and also 5Ks. Check it out, the running journey right on this channel. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.